hello. First off, I just want to say thank you for your time. I appreciate all of you and all of the support that you lend me in any which way, shape, or form that you show it. Um, yesterday I ran a run from start of game until I, uh, basically I just turned it off. I don't remember what I did wrong. I I, I didn't I didn't isolate what it was that I f failed to do correctly. Um, I think I just missed the two guys. The first two guys is all. Uh, for the talking to the soldiers or whatnot at the banquet. Uh, but I was kind of on tilt at that point. Um, I was on a good personal pace and uh, I had forgotten something and so I got kind of pissed off about that and uh, so um, then there we go again just doing stupid shit but we'll see if I can um We'll see if I can not suck this time. of my zone sick kind of garbage oh son of a bitch well there I go being a dumb son of a bitch right there that's it just me being an idiot you know all right well so much for not sucking all right well that's fine this was just a test anyway because I uh, I wanted to try and not suck. So we'll go ahead and uh, I just, I mean, that right there isn't really going to be something that matters, you know, like on a normal run. I mean, I'll need to have the money, but like, I won't, probably I should have the money when I get there. Um, so for anybody who is watching this and they don't know what the hell I'm doing here, like why am I going in and out of that door like that? Uh, the reason being is <coughs> there's that NPC that is walking uh, outside the building there to the left of the building well I mean to the left of the front door of the building there's this woman walking around uh, and I don't know who first figured this out but uh, if she goes up, up, right, left, here, I'll show you, because I'm not going for any kind of like crazy time here. You see how she's moving down now? And now she's moving right. And now she's moving up. And now she's moving up. 
And now she's moving down. And now she's moving down. It's basically her first step that she makes. <clears throat> um, that's what matters, okay? So her first step uh, can be, you know, a number of possible... Well, four different directions, right? The hell, where am I at here? Yeah, this whole thing is a messed up deal. I just want to get the the order correct, and then I'll do another. I'll reset it and try to polish it up a little bit because right now it's all. When I got here, so the part of the game, and I mean this makes logical sense. The part of this that I'm uh, the most comfortable with is. Start of game through the battle at Narshi. And, I mean, obviously that makes sense because, you know, every time a person plays the game, you know, they have to go through that section. Um, and if you don't complete the game every time and you start a new game, you have to go through that section again. So, it's the most frequently played section of the game. Obviously, it would, you know... Just make logical sense that that is the section of the game that I'm most familiar with and, you know, most comfortable with, most confident with. Uh, I've kind of broken the game down into four sections. There is Narshi to end of battle against Narshi. Or, beginning of game through the first the battle with Kefka up at Narshi. That's, like, basically it. Uh, that's the, the way I've broken it down. Um, then, you know, you make a save when you leave town, and then that's the first section, okay? Come on, you ass clown, get out of my way! Um... Okay, so we're all still wounded here, and we're not going for a hard time here. Uh, well, I guess I could've just used a tent, but... I'm just going to go ahead and hit that, because again, we're not going for a hard time. I'm This is mainly just the formality of it. I, I want to know that I'm doing the right thing in the right order, and that's all that I really care about right now. I can work on polishing this up <coughs> when, it, when I'm more concerned about a direct time number. Um, oh yeah, actually I could have just done this, just gone and talked to the healer guy down there, that's probably what would have been a better idea. Okay, so we'll go with you, we'll go with you, and we'll go with you, okay? And let's go ahead and there we go. And you have not been equipped with that. And okay, let's equip you. <coughs> okay, you have that. And what do you have? Shouldn't we have a headband? Did I sell? Why would he... Okay. Alright. Okay. Uh, and then let's do that. And you've got those. Okay. And is there anything that would be useful for you to learn here? Uh, you know, I don't even know. I don't remember you... Again. Like... Does it even matter? You matter. I don't think you matter. And I'm sure you do matter, but... Is there anything... Bum, 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 no. Um, not really. Mm, I guess we could teach you that. You're gonna be leveling, so wouldn't it be nice for you to have like I don't remember K 
Okay. And then you we're gonna have running shoes and white cape. <coughs> that should do it. Okay. Again, when this was, you know, if I was doing this for some kind of actual time. I'm just trying to refresh myself with this, because I haven't done this in, like, I don't know, it's probably been a month. And, uh, when I start, because the problem is when I do this, it's like, you know, it's, it's going to take me, most likely... I mean, there's two target times. There's the realistic target time, and there is the target time. My target time that I'm really seeking here is a sub seven hour. That's what I'm. That's what I'm hoping for. Did we not get a kill? Boy, this is just not going very well here.
I don't think I have the warp stones. <coughs> I think I forgot to buy warp stones on this save. I'll have to remember that. I think I can buy him in Figaro when I get the Phoenix down and Revivifies. There's just so many things to remember, you know? It's a long game and a lot of things to remember. It's not like some games where you can just sit down and beat the whole thing in under an hour, you know? This game just is not that way. If uh, memory serves, the world record for any percent glitchless is something like five hours. I, I think it's a hair under five hours, but still, that's like the best, right? So, I'm not gonna pretend to be on that kind of a level that's not even a personal goal of mine to ever I mean I play this game enough where I kind of feel like I generally don't suck compared to the average person and I you know that's fine I have some personal goals I'd like to accomplish and those are, you know, good enough for me. Um, I was talking to a friend of mine about this, and it's, it's basically is just one of those things where it's like, well, you know, how bad do you want it, you know? Like... How much time and energy are you willing to put into shaving off more time, you know? I'm like almost sure I have no warp stones. Yes, no warp stones. Okay, that's fine. I knew that going into it. I mean, this run is, you know, far from the end game that I have envisioned for this. Um, 
Well, I shouldn't say that. Up until the save where I started this at, I was actually on a pretty solid personal pace. Um, so I didn't really have any beef with that. It's just... Once I got to this section, my memory was a little bit fuzzy, and I couldn't really remember exactly... There were some things I couldn't remember specifically. Like, I should have died against the cranes. I didn't. I did beat that fight, but I should not have. I got lucky to win that fight. Setzer had 10 hit points left. And... Everybody else was knocked out. And I just happened to get 7 flush off. Which just happened to kill a final crane. So, I mean, that's not... That's not what we're going for there, you know? If somebody gets knocked out, it's not the end of the world. <laughs> if multiple people get knocked out, it's not the end of the world, you know? That's... it's just not... That's not the, the... you know, the worst thing that could happen. Um, but... I do kind of like the chocobo mechanic in this game. Um, I would have been totally cool with them expanding it a little bit. Um, it seems like the jump, I mean, the chocobo mechanic in 4, for example, was fairly substantial. Uh, and then the Chocobo Mechanic in 5 was more, I mean, it was less substantial in 5 than it was in 4, and then it was even, even less substantial in 6 than it was in 5, uh, and then they came back with a very robust chocobo mechanic for seven. Um, which, you know, I haven't played seven in a while. I was thinking that after I do finish this um, personal goal that I have for this game, that maybe, just maybe, I would go back and revisit 7. Um, I'm not sure if I... I don't know. I, I, uh... I've beat the game maybe two times or something like that. Um...
I don't know if I've beat it more than that. I know I've started a game a couple of times that I never actually finished. You know, played a little bit. You know, maybe didn't even get out of Midgar and then... You know, okay, I'm good. So, I'm not really sure. But, I don't know that I've ever beaten the game more than twice. The first time, uh, you know, I played it pretty extensively. Probably didn't get everything, but got a lot of stuff. The second time, I beat Ruby Weapon and Emerald Weapon. Um, that is a... Alright. Uh, defeating those weapons, those two specific weapons, uh, Ruby and Emerald, are um, that 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 is some stuff that takes some time, and you kind of gotta be kind of advanced. I mean, I guess I shouldn't say that. You know, if you are as knowledgeable about that game as you know. I don't know. I'm not. A, I am not as knowledgeable about that game as the people that are like. Did I talk to this guy? That are like you know, highly knowledgeable about that game. I don't know that much about that game. Like I know a little bit about that game, and I know that uh, that there's a lot of stuff about that game that I don't have really any knowledge of. So, it's kind of a situation where, um, you know, there are probably faster and easier ways to do most of the things in that game than the ways that I did a lot of the things in that game. Like, specifically with, like, Emerald and Ruby Weapon, there's probably, there's probably a lot of cheese that I don't know about. Let's put it that way. There's probably massive amounts of cheese that I just don't know about in that game. I, I would be pretty confident that there is a... cornucopia of cheese that I don't know how to... I don't know how to do it. Alright, so I think it was... It must... I don't know who the hell did I miss last night. I really don't know. Um... I don't remember screwing this up for a long time, but I did last night. But then again, I, like I say, I was kind of on tilt, and I was kind of salty and pissy, because I had screwed some shit up. Like, I couldn't remember the pattern for the NPC outside of the Opera House. Or the... the not the Opera House. Uh, the Auction House. And 
I, I just, I couldn't remember what to do. But I feel like... I feel that that was kind of like a, a one-off. And, um... I feel like hopefully that shouldn't happen again, you know? You know, I don't know if I have to fight this battle to get... I just remember last time I went through this whole thing, I... I did something wrong. I don't remember what it was. But it cost me the... It cost me the charm bangle. Which then kind of screwed up the whole rest of my... <coughs> I mean, from that point on, you know, my relics that I was using were improper. They must be found and told that we're no longer their enemy. Feel like Saban gets his gear dumped here. I forgot to unequip him, but I kind of feel like he does get that gear stripped off of him, maybe. Even if you don't remove it first. Let's find out. Earrings. Yeah, they do. He does get stripped. I don't know what I did to uh, cost myself the charm bangle. I really don't remember. Come on, douche. Seriously, dude. I mean, what are the odds of that?
That fossil fang formation is pretty brutal. Alright, uh, it's really unfortunate that I shit the bed on that thing last night, because I did have potential there for a pretty solid run. I didn't die, I just forgot what I was doing. But I, you know, it's, it's understandable. It was probably a month since I'd last done this section. And probably, you know, probably the only thing I did in the last two weeks was maybe one day where I was doing some runs against the tears. So, like, basically since I started this job, I have had... Well, I've been working this 9 to 5 schedule, and then weekends off, but also football season's on. So Sundays, I've been watching football. 
And Saturdays, I have... Well... I've just had stuff to do. Um... But... Now that I have uh, this orientation period kind of behind me, for the most part, I have a, a schedule that will be um, actually quite a lot better. I'll have Fridays off every week, which is really cool. I haven't had a weekday off during this orientation period, just Saturday and Sunday, which I very rarely in my life have had Saturdays and Sundays off, and honestly, um, as nice as it sometimes is to have those two days off as your days off during the week, uh, I don't really care for that. I mean, I, I don't, I don't like working Sundays. So working Sundays sucks. It's the worst day to work, period. It just, I hate working Sundays. Um, Saturdays, I don't mind. Um, I would rather have a weekday off than Saturday off. Because if I ever need to take Saturday off for something, I mean, I can, I can always do that, right? You can always arrange for a Saturday off. But if you go 52 weeks a year, not counting PTO, right? Because that's just something separate, but... If you go 52 weeks a year and your only days off are Saturday and Sunday, you can't schedule things, you know? You need to go to the chiropractor. They're probably not there on Sunday or Saturday. You need to go to the dentist. Good luck Saturday or Sunday. You need to go to a whole bunch of different places. Good luck Saturday or Sunday. They're just not open. Um, so... I mean, even when I have had salaried positions, um, I mean, you can kind of, depending on who you work for, um, you can kind of, uh, you know, dip out for an afternoon or a morning and, you know, you're, whoever you are accountable to is probably not going to bust your balls. Unless you work for some sort of, like, you know, terrible company that just no one would ever want to work for. Um, which, you know, it happens, right? People do work for shitty companies. I've worked for a few of them. But... I was never salaried when I worked for a shitty company. Uh, whenever I've been salaried, the companies have been not shitty. <laughs> I mean, it's, it hasn't always been, like, the best thing in the world, but, you know. Uh... Anyway, um, you know, when I was salaried, if I wanted, if I had a dentist appointment or something, I could just say, hey, you know, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to dip out this afternoon. You know, obviously let whoever needs to, you know, be aware of these things, you know, let them know in advance. Be like, hey, I got this dentist appointment. You know, they're not going to bust your balls. Now, if you go every week, say, hey, I need, you know, I need a half a day off every week, you know, <laughs> Even good companies are going to say, hey, uh, we maybe we need to have a discussion about this. Um, but, you know, if it's just every now and again, hey, you know, I need to take a long lunch here. Or, hey, I need to take a half a day off here. Or, hey, I need to take a half a day off there. And, you know, you're not abusing it. You know, most good companies aren't going to, you know grab the ball smasher and put you through the ringer for that kind of stuff. 
Now, if you work for McDonald's, which I don't have any idea what it's like to work for McDonald's. I'd never worked for McDonald's. But, you know, these corporate entities that uh, typically hire a lot of, you know, minimum wage type uh, entry level positions, you know, like high school kids and stuff like that. And it's like their primary asset as it pertains to staffing. Um, you know, and maybe, who knows, maybe McDonald's is actually a really good place to work for. I don't know. I really don't know. You know, who knows? Maybe they pay their managers like six figures. Who freaking knows, man? I've never worked for McDonald's. I do know that they have something called like uh, McDonald's University or something like that or McDonald's College or Hamburger College or Hamburger University. I don't remember what it's called, but I heard about it. Like, that it's a thing. I don't know, like, what all they teach there, probably a whole bunch of corporate bullshit that, you know how things are, right? It doesn't matter what industry you work in, there is the company line, or the expectation, or the rules, however you want to uh, define it. There is this set of rules... Um, and they're mainly in place, in, in my estimation, to give the company the right to terminate anybody whenever they want, because there are the rules, and then there is what really happens, you know? You look at, when you're looking to get hired for uh, a position, um... There is the job description that you'll read, which is usually like pages and pages and pages long, right? And then you get the job and you get trained in and like you don't do hardly any of that shit that was on the job description. Like you just don't. That's just. That's just what they list as all the stuff that you're, you maybe might be asked to do on some days. You might have to do some of those things, but generally speaking, that's just a whole bunch of shit that you'll never do. Uh, that's my experience. Usually it's like, yeah, this, that, and the other. That's what's important. After that, you know, don't worry about it. You know, like, usually the job description and what you're actually tasked with doing is is not the same thing. Just not at all. Um, but that's my experience. You know, maybe, you know, other experiences are different. Um, the more I advance in life... Uh, like, I mean, chronologically. And the more life experience that I gain, the more I realize that... Um, wow. We got three of these. That's good experience. Usually I just smoke bomb all these, but when I get the six... Of the six bombs like that, that's a good experience battle for one attack. It's, it's worth killing them. Um, oh, yeah. I should have been giving him... That is what I should have been doing. But, it, it seems to me that it... Does wow, holy cow, really just killing it with the six formation here. I don't think I've ever seen this many six formations ever. Um, it seems to me that as time goes on, uh, you know, it doesn't really matter if you're a doctor or if you are like okay so for example i worked as a direct tv premises technician for about four years 
Um, it just seems to me like it doesn't really matter what... Alright, let's get this done right here. It doesn't really matter what it is that you do, and I, I'm, I mean, even, even as it would be uh, pertaining to like a specialist, uh, like a neurosurgeon, right? Uh, I, I honestly, I think it just the primary difference is the equipment that the individual is working on, you know, and or a dentist, for example. You start off. And a dentist is a good example, right? So you start off, and you have, you know, in, in your mind, because you went to dental school, you have the theory of tearing down and building a tooth back up. Or tearing down and capping a tooth. Or, you know, where to put that needle so that you don't paralyze someone for life when you numb them or whatever right you have in theory learned these things but until you have enough reps doing the job where you learn the little tiny nuances and all of the little just the small little adjustments that an individual makes as they get better at doing something um like you you're not going to get good at it until you put the time in. But, really, the only difference between a lot of these things is how much money you get paid to do that shit. Like dental work, like, for example, right? Um, for me, I, I think about it and it's like, you know, I could have been a dentist. That would, you know, be probably not that difficult, right? But, when you really think about it, these guys do a lot of their work using a mirror, okay? So if you've ever tried to use a mirror to, to like, do something, it's all backwards. So your eyes see something and your hand wants to move a certain direction. And if you're using a mirror to do the work, it's backwards. So I think that would that would be like probably the single most challenging aspect of doing dental work for a living is trying to retrain yourself so that you could do the job, develop the muscle memory to be able to do the job with your eyes and then to be able to switch between doing the job with your eyes and then switch over to doing the job with your eyes through a mirror. Because you're going to have, I mean, you're going to have to go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, you know, constantly between those movements. And I think that would really be challenging for me um, to be able to, you know, really get good at that. Um, I mean, the fine tune work, you know, like, I don't think that would be a problem for me. Maybe for some people, but uh, I would just really be concerned about... You know, until I had enough experience, I'd be concerned about, you know, doing a bad job, you know, because this is somebody's, you know, their mouth, right? Forever. So, it's kind of a big deal. Uh, was there anything here? No. There is, however...
Anyway, I guess what I'm trying to get at is if your job is just simply uh, performing the same or very similar task day in and day out, like uh, for when I was a uh, direct TV technician, for example, uh, I started off, you know, I didn't know anything, I, you know, didn't know anything at all. Then I, you know, learned some stuff from field training, I learned some stuff from class training, but then they throw you out on your own and you're just totally lost because there's just so much that you're never gonna really understand until you encounter those issues and you know over enough time um, you know you have enough experience you start to get good at what you do and that's why I would never really want to go to a physician, and I don't go to the doctor much anyway, praise the Lord, I don't have to deal with that, but uh, I wouldn't want to go to a, a physician that was a younger individual. Like, you don't know your shit, bro. Like, you just haven't had enough experience to get good. Give me an old man that's seen shit for decades and knows what the hell's going on. Same thing like with a mechanic or something like that. I don't want some young kid trying to figure out what's wrong with my car. If I can't figure it out, probably some young kid's not going to be able to figure it out. Now, maybe there's some, like, you know, savant mechanics out there, right? Who knows? But I'm just saying, uh, you know, I want that old man who's been working on cars for 40 years, 50 years, and he's seen things that most people have never even heard of, and he's seen shit that he's going to recognize immediately, you know? Like, that's the kind of guy I want working on my car. And that's the kind of doctor I want working on my body. Whatever it might be that there is a professional who needs to diagnose a problem and come up with a solution. Uh, I want it to be an old dude who's been doing it for a long time and he knows what his shit is, you know? I don't want some kid that's like, you know, straight out of, you know, school. Doesn't know shit. I don't, I don't want that crap. I don't want to be his, like, learning process. No, thank you. I'm good. Oh yeah, we're gonna have to do another one of these. That's just all there is to it.
nothing more than a stupid octopus? <laughs> Gramps? You know, I might just let this thing run here. What is it, like 11 o'clock? We'll see how far we go. I mean, there's not that much left. I mean, there is, but there isn't, you know? And I'm probably not going... Well, I'll probably make another run at this thing on Friday. Um, but I'll start from the beginning and see if I can't get all the way through. The problem is that, like, you know, if you're talking about something that takes between seven and eight hours, um, you know, you really only get so many chances to actually do it in a given day. Like, if you mess up after six hours, you know... You can go ahead and take a break at that point, recharge your mind, and maybe get something to eat, get something to drink, use the bathroom, whatever, right? But do you really have it in you to start all over? I mean, for me, you know, like... I'm not sure if I put six hours into it, and all of a sudden, you know, I didn't make it, something happened, I messed up, or I got screwed, or whatever happened. Uh, you know, I'm probably not going to want to be like, yeah, let's start this all over again, you know. Let's go another eight hours, you know. that That's... I mean, if, if you screw something up in the first two hours, you know, that's not a big deal. You can do that over. But for me, I don't really like doing things over... I mean, how do I say this? 
Like, if I'm grinding something out and I'm, like, trying to, like, improve uh, what I'm doing, you know, I'm okay with, you know, repetition. But, like, if I, you know, if I want to really, really focus my best, you know, it, it's probably best if... Well, if it's something that takes a lot of time to get through, like, this game, I'm not going to want to, like, spam that shit, you know? This is one of the stupid spots here. Like, you can literally, literally lose your game to this fight. It's just another example of an interactive cutscene that can end your game. Uh, anyone who's watched any of my videos knows that I am a huge... I mean, it's one of my big-ass pet peeves is interactive cutscenes. I hate interactive cutscenes. I think it's one of the worst game mechanics that's ever been developed. It's absolutely terrible. Um... I understand the idea behind it. Okay. Uh, the idea behind it is like, okay, let's have this uh, story segment here, but then let's keep the, you know, let's let's keep the player involved, and uh, let you know, let's 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 help them not lose their attention. And and for me, it's like, uh, you know, like if you're gonna let me play the game, let me play the game. And if you want to tell the story, then let me watch the movie. You know, we don't we don't need to combine these two things. It's kind of like, you know, there is a transistor radio and then there is an electric shaver, you know, that men used to shave their face. We don't need to combine those two things. We don't need to have a shaving device that also doubles as a transistor radio. We don't need that. It's not something we need. It's not something anybody wants. Well, I shouldn't say that. There's how many billion people on the planet? There's probably some ass clown out there who says, Hey, if only somebody would make an electric razor that had a built-in transistor radio. This is what I need in my life to feel complete and fulfilled. Because there's weird people out there. And you know what? In the United States... There are more weird people today than there used to be. You know, I am so concerned <laughs> about the youth of today. I'm not, like, super old, you know. I am in my early 40s, okay? So maybe, you know, if you're 19, you think that's super old. But... Facebook wasn't the thing when I was in high school. Uh, yes, the internet existed, but not in the way that it does today. Um, there were not cell phones that were anything like what they are today. The technology has changed so much. That's the main thing. Technology has just changed so much. Uh, when I was in high school... Uh, like GoldenEye 007 and the N64 and like the PlayStation 2 and Final Fantasy 7, those were like big, you know, blockbuster games and consoles when I was in high school. Uh, PlayStation 2, 
N64, that was the era of, you know, my high school years, uh, as it pertains to video games, which it does seem like quite a long time ago compared to what we have today, but, uh, I was at Denny's today, I haven't been to Denny's for a long time, but I was working, and someone that I was working with wanted to go to Denny's, so we went to Denny's, and I ordered what I normally order from Denny's, which is, there's a sandwich that they have called a Superbird, and they have french fries there, they call them seasoned fries, and I don't know about all of the Denny's around the world, but in the region of the country where I live, they do, I believe, make their own ranch there at the store. And uh, I used to quite regularly, uh, when I was in my, oh, let's just say my 20s, probably specifically my early and mid 20s, uh, Denny's was definitely one of my go to places at 3 o'clock in the morning. 4 o'clock in the morning, whatever time it was when I decided, okay, uh, I'm done consuming alcohol for the day, I need to get some food. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's not like I, you know, partied every day, but when I did, uh, Denny's was that super bird with seasoned fries and a side of ranch. That was like one of my go-to meals. And I don't think it's any more greasy now than it ever was, but man, when I ate that thing today, I was like, I mean, I knew it was a gut bomb. I knew I was gonna be putting a gut bomb down, but man, that was some greasy ass shit. Ugh. I mean, it tasted fine. It wasn't like I had to really choke it down. I mean, I kind of. I kind of did have to choke it down because it was so greasy. And I don't really eat that kind of shit anymore, you know? Like, when I got home, <laughs> when I got home from work today, uh, I went in, so I, I went into my freezer and there was a bag of frozen uh, broccoli. I threw that shit in the microwave and I ate that as a meal. A bag of frozen broccoli that I cooked. Because I was like, you know, I gotta eat something that's, you know, gonna try and balance this foulness out. And uh, maybe get some fiber, some good quality fiber in me that's gonna, you know, make sure that that poison that I consumed earlier today, you know, gets... You know, I want to get rid of all that nasty out of my system. Then I went and ate a whole bunch of raw carrots. And a big thing of raspberries. Just a whole bunch of stuff that has, like, vitamins and minerals and fiber and, like, stuff that's good for me. Uh, cause... Ugh... I don't think I'll order a Superbird again, maybe someday, but, you know, it'll probably be five years before I eat at Denny's again, or longer, who knows, it's probably been five years since I ate at Denny's. Alright, uh, what am I doing here, what am I doing here, um, I think what I'm doing here is... Yeah, another cutscene, okay. Uh, you know, next time I go to Denny's, if I... You know, one thing, there's like... Okay, so Perkins and Denny's, kind of like the same thing. Uh, except for Perkins has like, kind of like a... A bakery kind of theme thing going on, where they have like, pies and shit like that. Uh, which, hey, you know, people like pie, you know? I like pie. Uh... But the thing is, like, I can't eat sweet stuff like I used to, you know? Like, I used to drink Coca-Cola. Like, that was, like, my go-to beverage, Coca-Cola Classic. Like, in my 20s, like, my breakfast was a can of Coke and a, and a Camel. I smoked Camel Lights at the time. A can of Coke and a couple of Camels, and I'm good to go. That's That was my breakfast. 
Uh, and I, I drank a lot of Coca-Cola. I used to drink a lot of soda pop. And, you know, I was never really, like, overweight, you know? I, I was... I stayed fairly... Uh, active, you know? Oh, I was always kind of moving around and doing stuff, so it wasn't like I just sat and, like, you know, never exercised. I mean, it's not like I, I'm not like the, the, I've never had, like, a gym membership in my life. I've just always kind of been active, you know? So I never really, like, it wasn't like you see these people that walk around, well, I should be, like, waddle around, you know? Like, I saw one of these women the other day. I don't know, where the hell was I? Not just yet. You know what it was? Uh, I was driving down the road, and I was driving past a, uh, a pizza hut. And there was a man and a woman walking, uh, like they were going to be entering the pizza hut, you know? And I'm assuming that they were husband and wife. Uh, and I would say that they were probably in their, oh, what are we going to give you? I think that's it. Uh, what the hell is going on out there? The dogs are freaking out out there. 
I don't have any dogs, but there are dogs in the neighborhood, and they are freaking out. And there's somebody in next door. I don't know what the hell they're doing. Something with some kind of big-ass pickup truck or something. I don't know what people do. I've never really been one for, like, a big-ass pickup truck. Uh... My ex-wife did drive a pickup truck. It wasn't a big one. It was like a Chevy Colorado or something like that. Which is, you know, like a... I don't know, like a Toyota Tacoma or something. Not a real, you know, like a mid-sized pickup truck. They don't really make those small pickup trucks anymore. I've noticed. You know, like, back in, like, the, well, I don't know, probably as far back as, like, the 1970s, they made these small little pickups, like, Isuzu made them, and Ford, and Chevy, and Nissan, Toyota, probably Mazda, probably everybody, right? Anyway, these were small pickups. They were like very small. Some of them, you know, every now, you know, some of them were four-wheel drive, which actually those small pickups with four-wheel drive were pretty kick-ass because they had a really short wheelbase and they could get around anywhere. You know, they were actually really, really good vehicles, um, like a Toyota SR5 type deal back when SR5 actually meant SR5. Buddy I used to work with, oh, I don't know, maybe 15 years ago now, he had an actual SR5. A real one. Now they just slap SR5 on some of their shit and they're not even, it's not even a real SR5. Alright, let's go ahead and bring you back there, bucko. And let's go ahead and... And let's go ahead and... Wait, do we have an ether? Let's use an ether. There, that's good enough.
Ninjas? Nope. Let's get going. That's what he was supposed to have. Nobody knows bio. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, it was supposed to be Celis to get that. Son of a bitch. Um. Oh, well. That's just things that we're learning here. We're not learning, but. Remembering, really. Because she's the one with the zone seek, right? Dur -dur -dur. And the one that we needed to get the extra experience. Dur -dur -dur. <laughs> and she's supposed to have bio, but she doesn't have. Dur -dur -dur. Why does she not have bio? That's what I want to know. Why does she not have bio? Probably you who's supposed to have bio. Um, Edgar. Edgar's supposed to have bio. I didn't give him Shote. Um, at the Mag Rotors, and I probably should have. couldn't remember who to give what. Um. 
Um, I felt like I was supposed to give him Shoat, but did I do something wrong there? But I think probably I was supposed to give him Shoat there. And so probably he should have learned. No, it's... What the hell? How am I getting this wrong? Like, I've done this how many times? What did I do wrong? Let's go. It's all muscle memory, I don't even think about it, I just go through and do it, you know? Probably it's not good that Terra is vanished here. should have switched. What does Terra have on? Okay, she knows fire too. Okay. Where the hell did she learn fire too? She must have learned it from... I don't know. Oh, probably her level. That's gotta be her level. Which is good. Two ninjas? Nope. Target it. <sighs> I 
Uh oh. Well, that's the end of us. <laughs> well. That's okay. All right. <sighs> I can polish that up. This was more about... Yeah, I did something wrong there. I didn't have bio. I made some mistakes. But I'm trying to do this from memory and my mind is foggy, so it's like... Because it's faster if I just remember what I'm doing, you know? I've got notes here and there, and I've... I don't know. It's all good. Uh, thank you for your time. I appreciate all of you and all the support that all of you lend me in any which way, shape, or form that you show it. And, uh... Lord willing, you'll see me again here in the future. Until then... Have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll talk to you later.